Welcome back to the Michael Duke Show, AM 700 KBYR News Time, 619 AM. Today's special guest is Kristen Tate. She's an author, political columnist. She's worked, uh, her work has been featured in the National Review, the Washington Times, Fox Nation, Real Clear Politics. Oh, it's so many, so many different things. She's got a brand new book out called Government Gone Wild. And I can tell you as a libertarian, it does my heart good to see more and more folks uh, embracing this ideology and, and for her to be able to get this kind of uh, this kind of exposure out there. Prior to graduating for Emerson, she founded the Young Americans for Liberty chapter in Boston and uh, led the team as its president. She's uh, here to talk with us today about her new book, Government Gone Wild, and how Republicans can capture the millennial vote. Kristen Tate joins us. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, I appreciate it. It's good to uh, it's good to speak with a, a fellow liberty addict. That's all I'm saying right now. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's kind of tough out there. Uh, you know, I, I, although I am heartened, I just saw the other day that uh, the libertarian thought is finally a plurality in America for the first time since they've really been tracking it. Uh, I think more and more people are getting a little frustrated. And uh, is is that how one of the ways that we're going to start seeing millennials maybe be captured? more into this kind of conservative mindset? Absolutely. And if you want to imagine the future of the Republican Party, I think you've got to consider libertarianism. I mean, millennials are very libertarian socially, and they tend to be more conservative with fiscal issues. So if the GOP wants to keep its party alive and strong, they need to start embracing libertarianism, and that's how they're going to capture young people. Right. Well, you know, look, I'm a Christian, and so I have certain closely held beliefs, and there's certain things that I believe in. But I'm also, again, libertarian in nature, which means I don't believe that the government should be pushing or poking any certain ideology out there. And that seems to be something that the mainstream establishment of the Republican Party has missed. They seem to miss that every time they try to embrace a lot of these social issues, uh, they, they end up submarining their own chances of really capturing that middle-of-the-road America. American who really is kind of ambivalent a lot of times. Absolutely. The general mindset, especially among libertarians, is really a live and let live mindset. So when the GOP keeps talking over and over again about gay wedding cakes and abortions, it's not expanding its, its party tent. It's shrinking it. So, I mean, we're all for religious liberties, but millennials are not interested as much in those issues. But the GOP wants to get more people to join its party, again, particularly young people. They should start talking about economic prosperity and how the party can really give opportunities to people from all walks of life. Well, and I think more and more they really need to look at the, uh, you know, and, and I think libertarians have gotten a bad rap. Let's put it that way. I mean, I've been a libertarian for a long time, but it just seems like, you know, with this discussion of, uh, uh, you know, of drugs and uh, kind of the social issues of, uh, you know, gays and drugs, right? That's kind of like, hey, you're a libertarian. You're all for gays and drugs. You know, wait a minute. What? That's not what it's about. It's about keeping right. government out pretty much of anything. Why should I? If you want to marry your toaster, hey, you know what? Go ahead and marry your toaster. <laughs> Just don't involve me and don't ask the government's permission. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Again, live and let live. It's not about being pro-drugs or pro-gay. It's about being pro freedom. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. I, I had a I had a huge argument with a guy from my hometown here a while back who is a I mean he's an uber conservative, right? Uber GOP. I mean, if you if you looked up Republican establishment of the dictionary, it probably has his picture right there in the dictionary <laughs> next to it. You know, and we had this argument, and and he's like, no, no, you can't have legalization of marijuana. You just can't do that. It's evil. It's wrong. It's and I said, dude, how much freedom is too much freedom? I mean, at what point did you decide right. that it's, well, it's just wrong. It's, it, it, there is no recourse to it. But that's exactly what the essence of, of of what the founders wanted. I mean, basically, freedom, all they wanted was government as a framework to protect the nation as a whole, not to put people and hold people down. Exactly. And, uh, I mean, ultimately, when you look at the drug issue, what I always tell, um, you know, Republican Party members is, look, Marijuana has been illegal for a long time in many states, and people still use it all the time. So just because you don't like something and just because you want it to be illegal doesn't mean you're going to stop the action from happening. So well, the best we can do as a society is try to discourage people from doing that action and, you know, educate people, but 
just banning things and throwing people in prison for smoking joints is not really helping the situation. No, actually, and and, and you're right. My producer just said, he just sent me a message. It says, mechanically, essentially what you're telling people is to just not vote for you. If you're embracing these things where, you know, you're talking about gays and other, just you're basically saying don't vote for us because, you know, we're, again, we're not being inclusive. Um how, how, exactly. So what is the mechanics here? What what can we do? Uh, you know, because I'm sure the Republican establishment, I'm sure, is listening to this program. Uh, <laughs> what, if they're listening to to this program and Kristen Tate, what what is the answer? How can they capture that millennial vote? Well, as we've been talking about, I think that they need to start highlighting their economic policies more. But doing it doing that in a way that's exciting and inspiring is really important. Because economic policy is not always an exciting thing to talk about. So if Republicans want to get young people excited, they need to show them with really, really positive and inspiring rhetoric how their policies lead to freedom and prosperity for everyone. Right. Millennials don't care again. They don't care about gay wedding cakes and all this stuff. We want to know how we can get good jobs, how we can flourish, and how we can find the best opportunities. So if the GOP wants to get millennial voters, that's the kind of stuff they need to focus on. And another thing I always talk about is the importance of messaging. It's not necessarily about substance, it's about messaging. So the GOP needs to put out their message and really uplifting positive, snappy ways that will get the attention of young people. But, I mean, are they really, a, you know, that's the other thing, you know, technology and all this other stuff and, and uh, you know, the uh, you know, the use of the interwebs and all this. I mean, it just seems like the Republicans are stuck still in the, oh, look, it's a typewriter. What is this newfangled <laughs> thing, you know? Uh, it's, right, right. We've just discovered the cordless phone. It's amazing. You know, I mean, what's what's going on with this? Are they are they able to? You think they're going to be able to embrace the new technology and bring that together? I really hope so. I think that they need to start utilizing more edgy uh, media platforms. I mean, look at what Obama did in 2008. He ran a brilliant campaign. He was able to connect with young people because he spoke with them in a language they understood on platforms that they were using. I mean, using Facebook and Twitter, that's like standard. You have to do that somehow. Right. But it's about going even further. It's about... You know, these guys need to start going on shows that young people watch. Like, Obama went on MTV. That was a really good call on his part because young people watch that stuff. Sure. Doing interviews with blogs, that seems a little unconventional, but that's the kind of stuff Obama did, and it works really well when you're trying to connect with young people. Tyler Oakley and those kind of things. And, and again, a lot of people think that's pandering, but if you're reaching out into the millennials, that's what they understand. I mean, that's the language exactly. that they understand, and it's the medium that they understand. Let's talk for a minute about your, by the way, we're speaking with Kristen Tate, who's an author, political columnist, and libertarian gal extraordinaire. Uh, Government Gone Wild is the name of your new book. What possessed you to try and fight the machine? <laughs> Well, as conservatives and libertarians, we all know that our political system and environment is pretty toxic right now. But um, I've been a journalist for a few years, and as I've been doing research over the, over the years, I started finding these really incredible and shocking things that the government does on a continual basis. And I thought, wow, you know, a lot of people realize it's bad, but they don't realize how bad it is. So um, I expose some shocking and sometimes hilarious stuff that our government does on a daily basis. And this stuff gets no press coverage. So I really wanted to shine a light on this. But each chapter kind of takes readers through a different uh, subject. So it touches on everything from welfare to foreign affairs. But it's not totally a negative book because at the end of each chapter, I offer readers really concrete things that we can all do today to get the country back on the right track. Give, give us an example. I, I don't want to spoil all 28 chapters of it, but give us an example <laughs> here of uh, of one or two things that, you know, we'd just like our whole brain would explode if we actually understood what they were doing. Well, here's a good example. Um, every year for the past couple of years, our government has been spending $400,000 on creating a Mars menu. And, you know, we're not on Mars yet. We're not, we don't have any plans to go to Mars. But this is the kind of stuff the government does. They pay overpaid scientists to work on these never-ending projects. And, you know, $400,000 in the big scheme of things doesn't sound like a lot of money. 
you know, four hundred thousand dollars there, six hundred thousand dollars there, it all adds up. Pretty soon so, you're yeah, talking I, about pretty soon you're talking about lunch money. Exactly. Wow. So, uh, it, it's so four incredible the kind of stuff going on. Four hundred thousand bucks a year to plan a menu on Mars that we might need ten years down the road. Yeah. Right. And the, and this project keeps getting renewed every year and they never cre they never are able to complete the menu, but we keep paying for this stuff. <laughs> Here's another one. We paid um <laughs> over six hundred thousand dollars last year for scientists to give some rabbit Swedish massages to figure out if the massages help cure diseases. Nice. Guess what? They didn't find the answer, but they're going to keep trying again this year, and maybe we'll find out this year. So. Man, could you imagine? What do you do for a living? Well, I massage Swedish <laughs> rabbits. Uh, now, the question was, were the rabbits, were they Playboy rabbits, or were they regular rabbits? That's what I want to know. Were they those <laughs> they kind of bunnies, or were they... That. Okay, they did safe. not disclose that in the government report. Yeah, I, I massage bunnies, Playboy bunnies, for a living. It's amazing. <laughs> government pensions so for all. Ridiculous. Well, it sounds like a joke, but unfortunately, it's completely serious. We're well, paying for this nonsense. Exactly. It's like the treadmills for the shrimp and the monkeys and the gambling and all this kind. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy stuff. But this is what our government has become, almost a caricature of, of itself. Uh, it exactly. is it, It's absolutely amazing stuff. Kristen Tate, again, the name of the book is Government Gone Wild. It's going to be in stores April 26th. You could pre-order your copy today. Uh, I am exclusively uh, exclusively reserving the right to call Kristen back and have her back on the program at any time, Kristen. I love having you on, and of course, it's a it's a pleasure to talk libertarian politics with somebody every now and then. I'm feeling like would, I'm feeling like a little better about it. I would love to come back on and agree. It's rare that I find uh, other libertarians out there. Well, good. Well, I'm going to put you back on hold, and Mr. Berger is going to take all your secret information. He might ask you for your phone number. I mean, I'm just, that's my how, my, my how fly out. We're going to be back with more Don't Go Anywhere. The Michael Duke Show continues. We've got more. Jamie Monticelli is up next in the KBYR Newsroom. Valley Blaze.